Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 30th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Antonio, Texas. Xavier today provided a quick write-up in how to do behavioral malware analysis using Microsoft's Attack Surface Analyzer. This tool was originally released in 2012, but just about a month ago, Microsoft did release version two of the tool. The idea of the tool is to compare systems before and after you ran the malware, and it will summarize some of the significant changes, like for example, changes to the file system, added user accounts, services, certificates, network ports, and changes to the registry. Sure, you can probably come up with other things that you would like to see in this list, and Microsoft is still actively developing the tool, so they may certainly expand this. Now, main selling point, of course, it's easy to use, but the one thing that's probably often overlooked is this is not just a Windows tool, it also works on Mac OS and Linux. As Xavier explains, this is sort of a pretty neat tool to use in a quick triage of malware. Doesn't give you the complete picture, but hopefully enough to tell you whether or not it's worthwhile spending more time analyzing the particular malware sample that you're looking at. Also up to now, malware is not looking for this tool like many other tools that may change how malware behaves. Now this of course may change if more people become familiar with this tool and if it's more and more used to actually analyze malware. And if you're using Docker, be aware, a new vulnerability has been patched in all versions of Docker and proof of concept exploit code is already available for this vulnerability. This vulnerability CVE 2018-15664 is a Simlink race attack. And yes, while it has the 2018 CVE number, it just was made public. The core issue here is the follow symlink in scope function. This function suffers from a very classic time of check, time of use vulnerability. What this refers to is that, well, this function checks if a particular symlink actually ends up inside the container. Now, this is done before the file is actually used and this gives the attacker an opportunity to actually modify the symlink after it it has been considered safe by this follow some link in scope function. The end result is that an attacker can create a some link, then alter it to point to arbitrary files on the file system. With that, the attacker can modify either read or write arbitrary files on the host. So this of course then leads in some cases also to code execution. If I can modify a file on the host that is then later executed, like for example, a cron job or the like. Exploitation is trivial as shown in the proof of concept. Uh, exploited was published with the advisory. So you should certainly try to patch Docker as quickly as possible. And if you ever looked at your logs recently, for example, on a web server, you probably noticed a lot of scans for PHP My Admin, a fairly popular PHP script that's used to administer MySQL databases and well had its rich history of vulnerabilities and of course also bad configurations. In addition, SQL Server is also still a very attractive target for a lot of attacks. Very easy to sort of ignore essentially this background noise of attacks. Well, GuardiCore now looked closer at some of these attacks against SQL Server as well as against, as against PHP My Admin. And what they found is that while the exploit is very straightforward, essentially they're just looking for unprotected protected instances of the software and then use it for remote code execution. The 
payload uh, being then installed on vulnerable systems is actually kind of interesting. The main target here appears to be Windows systems and as part of the payload, which also includes uh, your usual crypto coin miner and such, there is also a kernel mode driver that actually uses a valid developer signature. The signature has been expired, uh, but is Arnet still valid? And this kernel mode driver is then used as a rootkit in order to gain persistent access to this system. Even though this code apparently, at least according to the compile date, was compiled originally in 2016, so far from new, antivirus still seems to have a hard time detecting it. The certificate has now been also revoked by VeriSign. So hopefully uh, this will help a little bit uh, with this wave of attacks until they get a new certificate. In general, it looks like they were able with this fairly straightforward and simple exploit to get access to about 48,000 servers over the time frame of about a month. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.